Hi, I am Joy. Welcome to my channel, Joy Man vs Code. What is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a currently available best platform for container orchestration. Even if we have not started using Kubernetes, don't worry, you can start by now. The knowledge in Kubernetes will be an asset in the future. This video is mainly talking about how can we host and simple ASP.NET Web API into Kubernetes. Here the Kubernetes will be running on Docker desktop in the development machine. Let us see how the video is organized. The main thing is a demo of hosting the API application into Kubernetes cluster. After we host into that, we will be talking about some internals, not really the Kubernetes internals, but uh, how the application is hosted and things like that. And what is not included is the environment walkthrough. This video is expecting the environment to be set up with a Docker desktop and Kubernetes enabled. The prerequisite for this video to understand is an idea about containers and uh, Kubernetes. These are the environment setup. The environment should have Docker desktop that is running on Windows 10. Better to have WSL2 as a backend. WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux. Then Visual Studio 2019 with ASP.NET and Docker tools installed. The containers we'll be using are the Linux containers. There are Windows containers but uh, they need more time to boot up and all. So in the industry we are all using Linux containers for the actual production workload. The details about setting up the environment is already available in my blog. The URL to the blog post is given here. Also, I'll be giving the link in the video description. This is not a hands-on session. Here, we will be using the source code, which is already available. You can download the source code from the location given here. The same link will be provided in the video description as well. Please note that this is not a production-ready demo. This is for developers to have some idea about how Kubernetes can be used for hosting ASP.NET Web API. Let us start the demo. This is a project file that is opened in Visual Studio. This has already a Docker enabled and required files are present in the folders. This project is a simple ASP.NET Web API. We can see there are two controllers. One is a weather forecast controller. Here is a source of weather forecast controller. This has a get method. In that get method, it is returning some random values. We can directly run this application by clicking on the run button. Let us run the application using the docker. Note that this is not using Kubernetes. This is to make sure that the application is running locally using docker desktop. You can see in the output window, it is creating the docker image and that will be used for running the application. This will open the application in the browser pointing to the swagger file. This is a swagger page. And from here, let us execute the weather forecast API. Click on it and try it out. Now click on the execute button. It is making the API call. Here we see the response body. Here it is returning two entities. Copy the URL and open a new tab. We can directly execute it to get the JSON. Here goes the JSON for that web API request. Once we make sure the application is running locally using the containers, it is time to move to the Kubernetes. But before we go to Kubernetes, we need to create the image and upload the image into an image registry. We will be using PowerShell window to run the commands. Please note that there is nothing PowerShell knowledge required. The commands can be run in the command line as well. The first step is to make sure we are on the same directory to run these commands copy full path i am going to that location now this is location where the uh, docker file as well as the kubernetes files are available here you can see docker file and there are two kubernetes files we will be using this file k8s docker desktop deploy for this video first let us create the image here you can see it is running and it is creating an image this image is created locally it is completed Next step is to tag the image and push to the image repository. Let us first tag the image. This is a command. Docker tag, the existing image name and the new one. Here you can see the version. I am using 006. This will tag the existing image with the new name. The tagging completed. Now I am pushing 
that new image to the repository here it is going to the docker hub i did already login into the docker hub in this machine so it will take the credential automatically let us push the image here you can see it is preparing waiting and it is completed the pushing now let us deploy to kubernetes before deploying let us understand what is this file this is a kubernetes definition file here you can see this is a deployment and here the container name so here the version is wrong I have to change the version to 6 because this is the latest version we just pushed. Here you can see the service. This service means it is using the above container for exposing an HTTP endpoint. Here the sample uses node port and these are the port numbers. This is a port number for the service. This is a target port number. This port number is where the container application is listening to. Please note that uh, this 8080 is not the port what we will be using to access application from our local machine. That port will be different that we can see once we deploy this file into the Kubernetes. Let us go to PowerShell. This is a command, kubectl. Some people say kubectl. <laughs> Apply, file name, and this is a file. Kats docker desktop deploy. Let me run this. So here you can see the command says web api configured and service unchanged this means i had already deployed this one time if we are doing for the first time it will be telling uh, both are configured now in order to see what is the url we can hit to see the application let us run the below commands these are the two commands i am going to run this is out of those commands here we can see the actual port that we can hit to reach the service it says web api service type is node port there is no external IP and here we can see the actual port what we can use is 3585. This is a URL which we will be using for hitting that API. Please note that it is HTTP, localhost, then the port number, then the API controller name. So it gives a value similar to how we run in the local docker. If you refresh you can see it is giving different value. This is the basics of hosting and web API into Kubernetes cluster in the local machine using Docker desktop. If you are wondering how this magic is happening, let us understand little deeper. Let us understand the networking aspect. So here we see this, there are two ports, 8080 and uh, 3585. 3585 is a port what we can access from our machine and this has mapped into 8080 port of a service. Now coming to the definition file, here it says 8080. So this service is listening on port 8080. This port 8080 is accessible only inside the cluster. If we have another pod or container want to access a web API service, they have to use port 8080. Now we reach the service only. From the service, it has to reach to the actual container where our application is running. That is where this mapping comes into picture. Whoever is hitting the service on port 8080 will be routed to target port 80 of this web API pool. So how this connection is happening is here in the service, we have a selector service web API. This will search and will find this line service equal to web API. Please note that here we have selector and here we have label. So once it reaches this container or the port level, it will try to hit the container using this container port. So this is a port where the application is listening to request. This is the way the request is routed from our local machine to the service, service to the container and container is serving the response. One more thing to notice here is the type node port is only used when we are locally developing. Actually in the production, this should be a load balancer. Now let us see what is inside the echo controller. Here goes the source code. Whenever an echo controller is activated, it will be returning details about the system. Here you can see it will be returning the host name, the local IP address, remote IP address, request address, and the environment variables. Let us see how it looks like in the API. Here is what it is showing. Host name is, is a port name, local IP address, remote IP address, environment variables, lot many things. The main thing I have seen here is many configuration or environment details are coming as a environment variables into the process. So here we can see even .NET running in container, one attribute is coming with the value true. Similarly, the .NET version and the ASP.NET version. Now if we keep on refreshing, 
we will be seeing always getting the same host name and the same local IP address. So this is happening because we have only one replica of this uh, pod. So there is no load balancing or anything like that. Now let us see what will happen if we change the deployment to have three replicas or two replicas. In order to do that, let us go here and here is a number. Let us change this replica one to replica two, saving it. Go into PowerShell again, run this command once more. So here it says the API service unchanged, but the ports has been configured. I'm running the same command that we run earlier. Let us see what's the difference between last time and this time. Here we can see the deployment apps web API was one by one. That means we had only one replica and here we can see it is uh, two by two. So that means we added two replicas. Here we can see here uh, the replica set, the desired is two and above the replica set uh, desired was one. I hope that this is useful for getting started with a simple hosting of web API into Kubernetes. In case of any queries, please add into the comment section. As always, thanks for watching the video. If you like these kind of videos, please subscribe and enable the bell button for notifications. Thank you. Bye.